we have uh, David Earp, uh, Solution Architect from Cradle Point. Uh, we don't yet have Gary Manise. He should be joining on uh, momentarily. He's our Director of Sales here at RCN. And then uh, my name is Mark Indelicato. I'm both your host as well as the Content Marketing Specialist here at uh, RCN Technologies. So, uh, David, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Doing good. Trying to stay cool. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a little warm here today too, hey guys. But uh, uh, I'm going to pop these questions up on the screen. Uh, we'll ask David and Gary uh, their opinion on it, and then uh, we'll go from there. So, with that being said, guys, uh, what are some of the co connectivity challenges facing the construction industry? Uh, David, you want to take uh, tee us off with this one? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, so, I mean, as Gary alluded to, you know, the construction sites are becoming much they're requiring more bandwidth to be able to pass, mm -hmm. uh, you know, sensitive data back and forth to, you know, from their de designers to locations, you know, for the foremans to manage the sites and locations um, to make sure they're doing things properly. Um, right. You know, some of those are, they're just really big digital plans for the site that might be changing on the fly, right? So they need that bandwidth. They need a, a lot of allocation available to them and they need it quick. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. I think one of the questions David comes up is security and how secure are these, you know, how secure are the networks that they're connecting to the network. And that's probably one area that we're seeing as well is, you know, you, you put a MiFi out there, what's the security level, right? What are you opening yourselves up to? And so, you know, the connectivity challenges that you see as sites go further out remote, as cities are expanding, in all directions, you know, then then the you layer on that security level on top of that and how secure are you at these sites? And you know, there's sensitive information being passed back and forth when you're doing construction. Not only the the floor plans, but some of the cost and some of the things that they're trying to put together. So having a very secure network is key. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean some of the uh some of the MiFi products out there, they don't have any sort of connectivity. I mean, any sort of security for them. It's just mm. a connectivity spot, right? So right. you're basically just opening yourself up to whatever might be out there um, by using those as connectivity versus something that has uh, some sort of built-in security infrastructure or some sort of tunneling capabilities um, that can help keep that connection secure. Yeah. Absolutely. That's and nice. that's, yeah, really one of those things that you can't... Uh, you really want to put an underline with you know it's, it's i think the best example is you know you never think it's going to happen to you until it does right so as you could be like okay i'm a construction company you know why is why is someone gonna you know hack into our our system or whatever but a lot of that's uh a lot of that is automated and doesn't necessarily care if you're a construction company or a bank you know if it sees an unprotected network it's just gonna hop in there and, and do its damage yeah, and, and, and the perception around security in general is starting to change also, right? It, it yeah. used to be, okay, well, it's not going to affect me. I don't have anything really super sensitive. No one wants what I have to when am I going to get exploited? When am I going to yeah. get attacked? When is someone going to try and get into my network? Um, and you, you really have to start focusing and look more towards that um, with yeah. anything you do, regardless of how sensitive or insensitive that data may be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if yeah, they can find a way into your core systems and they're using that as a remote construction site to get in, it, it just gives them an, an opportunity to get in. And then next thing you know, you're a big, you know, AE construction. And next thing you know, you're you're on the news because you've got a ransomware attack. And so, mm -hmm. you know, trying to look for connectivity piece, part of it is, you know, what's the security level of, of the devices that we're putting out on remote sites? So having something that not only can connect to the network, give you you know, that continuity of service, but also that security level uh, from, you know, some of the built-in things that Cradle Point has today for this, whether it's 5G or LTE, that's one of the key, you know, key points that we need to look at. So, you know, th those are some of the questions that really need to be raised as we're going through these types of opportunities. Absolutely. Um, okay, so we've talked a couple, uh, about a couple of different uh, problems here, some of the challenges. Uh, what are some of the, uh, or I guess, how can 5G help to solve these existing problems, right? I'm trying to share my screen here. Uh, yeah, apologies, it's, it is really running slow. Okay, uh, yeah, so how can 5G help to solve some of these uh, existing problems? 
Uh, Gary, what are you seeing from that uh, that perspective? Well, I think, you know, one of the things that we're looking at is taking R19, for example, it's built for these types of environments, right? Yeah. And so it's purpose built for transportation, uh, but it's also purpose built for what we would call dirty jobs. And, you know, most construction is going to be a dirty job for most of its uh, time. You know, it's going to be a lot of dust. It's going to be a lot of different things, environmental uh, pieces that are going to enter into this. And so having something that can be built around an R19's uh, infrastructure is going to be important. And then if you take that, the connectivity, the, the speeds and the promise of 5G in construction, you know, a lot of times, you know, there, there, there's a lot of information that has to be done at a construction site that has to go back and forth. You know, a lot of this is planned. A lot of these guys still rely on paper, but more and more are relying on tablets to look at how these different uh, layouts. And if you look at, you know, some of these building constructions, being accurate on time accuracy is going to be key. And if you leave that up to a questionable connection, you know, th th there are going to be potential errors or potential mistakes or potential delays that you didn't foresee. So having that reliability of a 5G network, the speeds that are built into that network are going to be crucial going forward. It's going to be the norm here probably within the next six, nine months, you know, today, you know, because of how the networks operate today, you know, they're used to a little bit of a, a delay, but going forward, these things are going to be critical to stay on time. Um, you know, projects, if you look at construction cost alone, you know, it's crucial to be on time today. You can't afford delays. You know, delays are not a couple thousand dollars anymore. They're millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. And typically these contracts for construction companies are based on timeframes that they've agreed to. And so putting any of that at risk because of slow connectivity is really a high financial risk that's, you know, no one from a construction site, no one from any of these types of projects wants to be responsible for. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, David, what are your thoughts on uh, how does 5G help uh, construction? No, I mean, he, you know, Gary's very spot on. It's a lot of it's going to come down to, you know, throughput capabilities and, um, you know, that speed to deliver those digital technologies that construction sites are moving towards to ensure that everything's done properly. Um, we're going to start, I guess you start moving into kind of a digital realm of all aspects of building, right? Not just designing the building, you know, printing out on paper if you need to, but having it on tablets uh, at the site so they can make sure that beams are in proper locations, you know, everything's yeah. secure in the way that it's supposed to be, but also for inspection purposes, right? So those inspectors that come out, they'll be able to validate that what they're seeing firsthand is the same thing that they're seeing in their hands on the tablets. Right. Um, but it was also mentioned earlier that, you know, with the MiFi capabilities, you might not have carrier presence in a certain area, one area or another area. The same thing's kind of true of 5G also. While 5G is really starting to ramp up and it's starting to be deployed all over the case place, having the ability to fail over to a 4G connection if that 5G isn't there is paramount. And having one of the fastest 4G modems built into that R1900 alongside that 5G modem, um, it's just it's a huge benefit to the locations as you're deploying the devices. Um, and as was mentioned, being a, a ruggedized form factor to handle those dirty jobs, you know, it's it's definitely going to be a key and a and a hot spot for for this kind of product. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, one of the things that really excites me, and I think I, I shared this in one of the uh, the posts that I made for this event leading up to it, is just uh, uh, a lot of the the future planning for five G is really it's it's not something that anyone can that knows for sure. It's it's all just you know future-wise is all just speculation, some of the huge things that are coming, right? Uh, you know, like autonomous vehicles bringing supplies to work sites or, you know, lifting uh, heavy equipment up into the air and then having, you know, another drone come up and weld it or something like while it's flying. Like, uh, I don't know, you know, those are just two things that kind of popped into my mind, but uh, 5G is definitely gonna bring some exciting things um, to any industry. Uh, construction is, is definitely in there as well. So uh, as far as, future proofing and setting yourself up uh, for what's coming in the future, uh, it's, it's a pretty good investment. Uh, so with that, yeah, let's see, we'll move on to our next one. Um, 
see. Okay, so what are some of the solutions uh, that are available to solve these issues? Gary, I know you know uh, a couple of the solutions uh, that yeah, are offered. I think yeah, I think, you know, David would probably mention their outdoor unit might be a good option for some of these, being able to point it um, in a direction of a tower and, and really capturing that mid to millimeter wave potential. Um, I think also that we mentioned the R9-1900, um, yeah. it's ruggedized. I think those are two today that are available. I think, you know, if I'm a construction company um, and if I'm in, you know, some really big industrial projects, I'd probably look at one of those two today to see how it would it, it could help. You know, you get a construction trailer, you you mount this, um, you know, you mount a uh, outdoor unit on there, and you capture some of that five G channels today. You know, you've got a secure network. You know, you've got a super fast network, and you know you have some capabilities along with it. And I think that's true of the R nineteen hundred as well. If we put that, you know, if we build a case around an R R 1900 to give it that next level of protection, it's another one that can be uh, used and, and portable, right? Take it from site to site. So if you've got a six to nine month project, probably a W2005, I would, I would imagine is probably a good choice. If I have a 90 day project, I'd probably look at an R 1900 in a, in some type of protective case with a great, you know, certified antenna that gives us that umbrella effect at the construction site as a great option as well. I mean, David, you, you know the portfolio. Yeah, yeah, no, ab absolutely. I mean, those are, they're, they're perfect for those use cases. Um, as you mentioned, the W2005 um, being that outdoor adapter unit for uh, longer duration uh, deployments. And you'd even mentioned the millimeter wave. So the W4005, you know, being an outdoor unit that can, you point it to the towers that you know have that millimeter wave capability and you can get some screaming speeds, you know, multi gigabit speeds through that product um, for those really long term multi year, uh, you know, site deployments. And, and think about what that gives you right now. You're not talking about 2D plans. You're now talking about 3D plans and and really bringing in virtual reality. And so you could have yeah. a construction manager walk through the building in a virtual site to understand, you know, do my blueprints match what we, you know, what the architect put together? And, you know, we can confirm that that's gonna happen in a virtual reality standpoint, as opposed to build it and let's see if, if it works. And so, you know, when you have some of these really large con, you know, construction, now you can bring in VR into this. And then having a millimeter wave uh, connection really allows that that technology to blossom in the construction site so you know it really opens up some of these larger projects to what the potential is if you're building a stadium for example you could then go to each location and say okay i've got to put something here what is that going to do to the view is it going to block the view how how's the uh and you know what, what is it going to do to the integrity of of the project and so knowing that from an architecture standpoint and then actually doing it virtual reality on site, you know, a lot of times if you look at construction sites, there's, there's certain things that are don't take into play that you could pull into play. You know, for example, if you're, if you're building a football stadium and you don't realize the direction you're facing that football stadium, you, you can bring the sun into play and it can really impact you as a team. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people don't think about that until it's past the time. And so now you're able to take that 5G connectivity, that millimeter wave connectivity, couple it with virtual reality and really plan out what's the view going to be from all these different locations? What's my player's view is going to be? You know, what's the team's view? How can we use that as an advantage during the fourth quarter? So it's things like that that people don't really think about that sometimes are the... Uh, you know, un, un, unintended consequences of doing it that now you can either plan for or plan around. Yeah, absolutely. That's, uh, I'm going to have to, I wrote it down because I'm going to uh, look that up later. That is a, a fascinating idea. Um, I am really curious. I I would say something like that uh, with the AR uh, or VR building plans will be around in the next five to 10 years. You know, um, you can see some movies and, and things they're shooting actually like on live game engines, you know, in real time where it's rendering everything uh, around you. So all you would need is uh, 
uh, is the site in real time, uh, you know, a 360 camera um, and then a pair of, you know, augmented reality glasses. And you can walk around and literally have the entire schematic projected uh, and see where everything's supposed to go. Uh, that's yeah, that's a fascinating uh, uh, future use case, I think, for it. Absolutely. Yeah. And and taking your stadium example, it's it's great to plan things out and say, this is how I'm going to do it because this is how the skyline looks today and everything. But mm -hmm. six months down the road, when you're halfway through building it, you know, a tower starts appearing, you know, that's going to block your view that you had. So capability of changing some things on the fly, you know, you, let's move around these, you know, these stairings or something. That, and uh, yeah, I, I think VRs and AR is going to be start to become really big in it. Um, you'd even mentioned, you know, like drone type welding. That would that could be a an awesome use case when mm. when and if it gets right. here. Oh no, no, that's um, that's a little further out, but uh... but but it's it's one of those things of you know where's five G gonna go and what can we do with it, especially in construction sites, right? Because that's yeah. that's not even something I would have thought of. That's that's a great <laughs> idea to be honest. Yeah, thank you. And, and I'll give you a real I'll give you a real world <laughs> example of a stadium. If you look at AT and T Stadium in Dallas, uh, they in the during the uh, fall time, the sun comes right in and bakes the field, and it's always in the player's face. Mm -hmm. And it's it's no one thought that through uh, when they built the stadium, and yeah. it's an indoor stadium. That's the uh, irony of it. And so th that's a real world situation that you mm -hmm. can see. You look at like you know building a bridge. What's it going to do around that? bridge and what impact is it going to have you know five years from now and so being able to project that out and things like that using a 5g connection is going to be it's going to be helpful because it gives you that real-time data in real time mm -hmm. absolutely yeah okay cool um so with that being said we'll move on to our uh, final question here uh yeah i know we're coming up on time if you could focus on one main point to get across to the construction industry, uh, for those who are watching, uh, what would it be? Uh, we'll go to David first on this one. Uh, I guess basically just try not to pigeonhole yourself in something that's cheap and easy just because, you know, it's, it's over the counter. You can get it, mm -hmm. you know, immediately and, you know, I can stick it in my pocket. Uh, you know, think, think outside the box. Think about the unthinkable really think about those security aspects that you might be missing by not you know thinking through your connectivity infrastructure and what you need um but then also don't let that hinder what your capabilities are in the construction industry you know drone welding you know don't don't let what you see today and what you know today of technology and of connectivity hinder what you can th think of and dream of um that can come because with 5g um, we're only scratching the surface and we're not even really scratching the surface. You know, we're just building on what we've had from 4G, you know, as, as stuff is deployed more rapidly and um, becomes more readily available, uh, you, you're going to be able to think of, of some crazy things and those applications will actually work. So, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, Gary, I, 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 <clears throat> yeah I, I think to add to that point and it, it reinforces it is don't let past technology dictate what the future could be. I think it's the same thing that David just said. And so using, you know, today's technology when when you can really future proof yourself for the next three to five years and increase your capabilities, it's, you know, we're talking about projects that require time, you know, effort and money to get to get completed. So don't, you know, don't uh, short change yourself on the connectivity piece from a cost standpoint. Make the investment today and understand that that investment in 5G is going to continue to pay off for the future. And so, you know, once you realize certain things that the capabilities of these routers have, you know, you can repurpose this once the project is done to the next project. And so now you have capabilities that allow you across the country access to high speed data throughput that's going to really allow you in a secure throughput at that that's going to protect you 
and it's going to allow you to you know stay on time work in a time sensitive environment but is purpose built for these types of projects you know we're talking about outdoor units and and really hardened solutions that frankly are not that expensive but you know if you amortize this and, and think about all the projects that you've got coming up and how often you're going to be able to redeploy these solutions over time you've made a perfect investment into the future right you know if you get a MiFi and it works because of the environment for six months you still got 90 days of something you're scrambling to go do and mm -hmm. so you you make this one-time investment you know that uh, you have something that's going to work for the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I and think, oh, sorry, Mark. No, no, no. Uh, go ahead, I, think, I think one thing that you know we didn't really mention here, and it kind of comes into the R nineteen hundreds capabilities, is is Bluetooth, right? It's got Bluetooth built into the product, and we're starting to see a lot of uh, we'll call it unique use cases on of Bluetooth. You know, not just you know people counting, beaconing, that kind of stuff, but we're starting to see use cases of putting sensors inside, inside, you know, concrete, inside cement, making sure that it bonds and adheres properly, making sure the the longevity and lifespan of that concrete slab or that concrete infrastructure, um, you know, remains solid. Um, you know, we've seen all the all the stories about what's happened in Miami, you know, with the towers and everything there. You, these new technologies with these concrete, you know, beacons and everything would would help um, just ensure security and stability of the project over time and they can be inserted right when you lay it and the device can talk to it constantly you know while it's on site so while you might use it to build out the site you may keep it there just to keep monitoring of that infrastructure also or you could pack it up and take it to the next site it, it's really what you need the, the product to do um, best for you yeah, I'll give you another real world example of that. And it's, it's around a football stadium. Um, <laughs> there was a stadium built in Allen, Texas, that was originally budgeted at, call it $70 million. And the concrete started failing on it, and they had to pump in another $10 million to reinforce the concrete. And so if they'd have known this up front, uh, mm. the integrity of the concrete and how they, how they mixed it and how it was poured and how it was put together, they would have saved themselves ten million dollars, knowing that in advance. So that's another real-world example of, of a case that David just brought up that really happened. And yeah. so, you know, I, I know most of my references have been football stadiums, but it's it's funny how, uh, you know, these are multi-million-dollar uh, projects that are supposed to be built for 20, 30 years. And if you don't know the right things up front, two years into it, you're pouring another $10 million into it. You know, we've seen buildings in, in Las Vegas, for example, to start to sink because the proper foundation wasn't put together. And if you have the sensors and you have things monitoring this, that really, you know, humans, we just don't have that, that, that uh, computing capabilities that a lot of these devices have. And so if you look at sensor technology, and how it works today. I've always said that, you know, Bluetooth is a great personal short range technology and it's mm -hmm. pur purpose built for that. Wi-Fi yeah. is a great long range connectivity and it's purpose built for being able to run large ports of data. So having something that has both in it or has something that capable that has everything you're, we were just discussing, and then at the end of the project, leaving it there in a place that can continue to provide that data is vital. Absolutely. Uh, so we are coming up on time now. So I'm going to uh, to jump to uh, really my answer to what I would um, what I would say to the construction industry is talk to an expert. Uh, uh, here on this slide, you're going to see uh, Gary's uh, real quick once this loads. Uh, I want to let you guys know uh, that our next webinar, 5G and Coffee, uh, is testing the limits of 5G. Uh, it's going to air July 22nd at 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, it's going to be a pretty exciting one. We uh, we have our 5G lab here, and uh, Cradle Point's going to be on site uh, to do that webinar with us. So really looking forward to that one. Uh, but guys, do you have any uh, any last parting words you want to add? I appreciate the opportunity to to uh, talk about the the uh, topic today and. Uh, you know, David's a great partner of RCN, uh, so working with him has been fantastic. So together we can 
answer any questions that anyone might have. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, feel free to reach out. To, uh, yeah, go ahead, David. I'm sorry. No, no, I was just going to say absolutely. Uh, thanks a lot, you know, Mark and Gary. I appreciate the time. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out on social or, uh, you know, Gary's uh, email and phone number was there. So uh, feel free to reach out to him. Uh, you guys will get the slides for all of this uh, in an email after the webinar. So uh, be sure to keep an eye out for that. But uh, aside from that, thank you guys so much. Thank you to our hosts and I hope everybody has a great rest of your day.